Live from Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube covering Pentaho World 2015. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Welcome back, everybody. This is theCUBE. We're live here at Pentaho World 2015. Pentaho was one of the very first customers that we ever interviewed when this whole big data meme started <laughs> out and we were at the early, early years in Hadoop World and Strata. Chris Jansen is here. He's the Director of User Experience at Black Arrow, a company that services telcos, doing some cool stuff with data. Chris, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming Thanks for on. having me. You're welcome. So, um, first of all, Pentaho World. This is my first Pentaho World, only Pentaho World's second, so I guess I get a pass, but have you been here before? When no, you, this is What do you make of the show? This is my first so far as well. It's been great, some of the keynotes that we had this morning were, were Yeah, really I nice. thought it was a good mix of, you know, so high level, you got a hardcore, you know, practitioner with, with FINRA. Mm -hmm. So let's, tell us about the Black Arrow story. What does Black Arrow do, you, Director UX? I mean, I guess it's self-explanatory, but maybe talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so, Black Arrow provides um, a platform that enables multi-screen uh, solutions for data and for advertise advertising. So we serve um, operators like Comcast, Charter, uh, Rogers in Canada, Virgin Media in the UK, and through them we also serve the content providers, so Disney and AMC and so forth are all onboarded onto our platform so they can do dynamic ad insertion um, on the different multi screens that they serve. Yeah, so we, as every user knows about dynamic ad insertion, your job is to make sure that it's, it works, it's effective, it's not right. just get this out of here, it's actually, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. That's a hard job. Yeah, <laughs> my job ultimately is to make our platform as easy to use for the operators so that they can get in, get out, and really set up our system and then ultimately set up campaigns, report on that, and really know what's happening in the system. So kind of the, the Google of your world, right? Is that yeah. fair? Yeah, fair enough, yeah. So talk about how you've used technology um, and what's changed? So, I mean, what's changed recently was uh, we added Pentaho as part of our reporting solution. And what that allowed us to do is really um, free up the reporting so that the user can define what they want. So before we worked with them, defined reports that were very broad, um, had a lot of rows of data that ultimately was difficult really to deal with. They'd have to take it somewhere else like Excel and kind of distill it down from there. Um, what we get with Pentaho is an ad hoc reporting tool that now we can set up the general model, give all the dimensions and metrics for them, and they can either use our standard reports that we've defined because we know the space, modify those and save them as new ones for themselves, or define ones that we haven't thought of. So talk about more about how that works. So you have this bog of data, yeah. and what do you do with that data, and what comes out the other end? Yeah, so we get a lot of data, and as I said, we support multiple screens, which means we support multiple platforms, and so we get data in different formats coming into our system, we end up loading those logs and that return path data. And what I mean by return path data is information about what actually happened in the session. So did the user watch this particular ad? Did they happen to fast forward and skip some of it? What was their engagement on it and, and so forth based off of the events that we get from the, 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 the player? So deep, pretty deep knowledge yeah, some pretty about deep what the user yeah. does. But, but then you enable your customers to build their own dashboards, essentially, right? Right, so we, we distill that information into a format that they can actually, actually use within um, our, visual, our visualization tool and our ad hoc, ad hoc reporting tool. And so they're able to create visualizations that allow them to see trends and analytics that they wouldn't have been able to see before with our, our own reporting or their reporting. One of the important things that we enable for them is since we're multi-screen, we bring all that data together into one place, which is something that's kind of new to them. Before they've had these different systems that report in different ways, and it's really hard for them to actually get that data together and be able to report on it. Okay, so part of your solution is the visualization piece, yeah, and making that easy. Is that something that you guys developed your own? So or? that's actually built on top of Pentaho on uh, Pentaho's analyzer. Okay, so you use Pentaho's Viz, yeah, and then what does the user get? They kind of get this sort of drag and drop, customizable. Yeah, so environment. they get this easy to use drag and drop environment. They have a list of the dimensions that are available, the metrics as they drag and drop. Um, it builds that out either as a report or as a visualization. It's, it's very guided as far as you put metrics in this place, you put dimensions over here. How to do a cross tab report is all kind of explained within the UI. It's very kind of simple to use and that's one of the reasons why we, had, we, we chose it. So there have been other tools you know, over time that uh, simplify uh, creation of cubes and, and reports. What was it that made Pentaho so much more effective in bringing together 
this multi multi screen capability that you're talking about. So it's it's what we're going to be able to do going forward on top of it. So the first thing that we wanted to address is really give this ad hoc reporting. Um, but there's a lot of data in there, and there's a lot of data that needs to be processed in a certain way, and that's where um, our, data, our, our data hub that's using Spark comes into play. So in the future, we're going to be able to actually open it up for them to do the kind of reporting where we can do some custom reports for them that's ultimately they, de they define and then we run on top of Spark. It may be a much longer running job because we're doing things like unique counts that if you're doing a true unique count as opposed to an estimation, you have to go back to the transactional data and count every one of those, and there's millions of tra transactions in a single campaign. Can you talk more about sort of Spark, maybe the, maybe the existing infrastructure, or pre-Spark infrastructure, and then, and then how you're using Spark, and, and what pieces Spark is complementing, supplementing, replacing, enhancing? Right, so uh, previously we had a, you know, your run-of-the-mill kind of MySQL data warehouse where we would ETL the, do custom ETL work into, into the data warehouse, and then ultimately write store procedures on top of that to be able to do the reports. What we have, what we moved to, was having Hadoop ultimately as a data store. So we get the raw logs in, we load those in into a par uh, in the raw format. We then transform that and put it into a parquet format within Hadoop it still. And then using Spark, we do transformations, aggregations, enrichment of the data based off of what's there and prepare that. Again, we write that in Hadoop so it's accessible there, but then we push that to what we call our reporting hub, which is InfoBright, which is um, basically an enhanced kind of MySQL database that runs on top of MySQL, and we push that data there, which is what Pentaho ultimately talks to. So using Spark in conjunction with Hadoop, yeah. will you move certain work to Spark that you normally would have done in Hadoop? So our entire ETL process has moved on to Spark, so all the work's being done there, and we also offer custom reports as needed to our customers that things that are farther in depth that we can't just do for every, you know, as a run in the mill kind of report. And so that, all those jobs will be run directly off of Spark. So you're replacing major portions yeah. of your Hadoop infrastructure with Spark completely or no? Well, so it's, it's working in conjunction because yeah. Spark is just on top of Hadoop. So yeah, okay. Yeah, it's but just enhancing there, what, what, what we already have there. Is there work that you, you know, like say, you just mentioned ETL and other pieces that, that would you have been able to do that previously or is this Spark? New enablement. I think at the scale that we continue to grow to, it we were doing we were doing things as far as we were enabling that reporting. But as we are running into more scale, it's to continue. We need we need that solution. So, um, Chris, I had a question regarding um, this. This pipeline looks like it has a lot of latency built in because there are a lot of discrete steps. Are you trying to shrink that? And in the future, what? technology might play a role where um, you're getting in data on one end and making it accessible to the customer to operationalize it either through a human or automatically on the other end. Uh, we already kind of get the information to them r relatively quickly. I think the longest runtime we have is, is an hour for some of the ETL processes. Um, but yeah, different platforms give us data in different ways. So, you know, your, your older QAM environments that most of TV is run off, all the video on demand is, is run off. Even the return path data takes time. It takes up to, it usually takes less than a day, but sometimes we have a, a window of three days that we'll have to continually try to match that information within the system, so. Okay, good, please. Well, then I was just, I'm just curious, because your, the, the latency, you know, how fast all this information goes through the pipeline has a determination on what technology you choose. Mm -hmm. So would it be, you'll take the lowest or slowest common denominator and you make your decision about what to use based on that? Or would you say the really latency sensitive stuff will use new technology? So it's a balancing act. Um, Ultimately, I, th I think as you said, it's going to depend on the, the platform, platform that we're supporting and how frequently we're getting that feed of data. So, um, you know, in the future we may need to enhance what Spark's doing to be able to do more frequent um, data ingest depending on the platform. And, and what, in, what help us tie that back to what's, what's going on? Like, what ads are being bid on or presented? You know. Um, video to on demand, so it might be as three days. What's what's the one that's closer to real time? So we we support different um, 
platforms we, we support, digital platforms that information comes through vast. Ultimately how return path data comes for that is much different with a, someone hits a pixel and that says, hey, someone had an impression or this was a fast forward event and then we record that and log that immediately. Um, ultimately we then put that into our ETL process and then expose that into the reporting. Okay. You okay. guys won an excellence award yeah. for this work. Talk about that a little bit. What's that mean to you? Why, why do you think you won? Um, it really, to me, validated one of the things that I was trying to get out of Pentaho is really the seamless integration into our application. And I think us winning the award really speaks to that we, we did the right things to really make it feel like it was a unified part of our, uh, our product and that we were able to do a, a couple enhancements on our own extending Pentaho based off of what it provides to give additional you know, user experience um, gains within that. You know, the, the, I was listening to the keynote this morning from the chief product officer, and he laid out this dazzling vision that goes way beyond what we used to think of you know, business intelligence. How does that roadmap fit in with your, with your plans? What, what would you build on it that you know, that you hadn't thought of before, or what alternative roadmaps are you considering? So there's a lot of different aspects in the different parts of the roadmap that we're interested in. Um, Spark, when we started, was really in the labs, so we're not really using that in PDI, and I think ultimately as that grows up within to the PDI infrastructure on their roadmap, it, it'd be very interesting for us to start leaning on that for our ETL process and so forth is one potential option we have once Spark is, as Spark becomes a more integrated piece of, of their, their platform. Um, I was excited to see a lot of the, the enterprise hardening that he was mentioning and the continued hard, hardening. Um, you know, we want to make Pentaho feel like it's just part of, our, uh, part of our product and it's seamless. And so as they add the features there, that really allows us to give a seamless experience and also allow us to make decisions for the, for the user as they're using the application. So one thing they added in one of their recent releases was the ability for us to change models for the user without the user knowing what's happening. So what that allows us to do is like really- Like to deploy a new predictive or prescriptive model? So we, we've already, uh, sorry, so the, the model that describes um, what dimensions and metrics exist, what the hierarchies of those oh, okay. metrics the, and dimensions. The, cube, the, the, the cubes, yes. Okay. So what the feature that they gave us allowed us to programmatically switch between those cubes. And so now we don't have to ask the user, choose which cube you want to work with today. Right? They can just go into the report, say, I want this dimension, this dimension, and this dimension, and we're able to decide we need to use this cube, and this is the most efficient cube for that. And we switch to that seamlessly. And dynamically. Dynamically, yes. Oh, so okay. that, it's, a, it's a really nice thing that really gives a huge user experience gain. They don't have to think about it. I mean, they don't have to think about it. They don't have to know what our architecture is to be able to do their reports. Oh, you they mean just, they just say what dimensions they, they want? They just drag and drop. That You have something that's called campaign name. I just drag and drop campaign oh. name. We have some things that are high cardinality, um, like program. And if they drag in program, we have to switch to a special cube that has that high cardinality I I item in it. So it allows us to quickly do that and really, they don't have to worry about what our architecture is. They just have to know what their information they're trying to yeah, get so to. That's essentially a cube template that you can invoke yeah. on the fly. They don't think about it. That's, that's critical to getting you know, data in the hands of you. I always talk about citizens analytics today right. so, several times. I mean, the important piece of you know, the analytics and reporting is breaking down the walls of having to know yeah. what the data is, understanding it, and just you want them to be able to drill in and seamlessly go down through the data. And that's what they have provided so, for us. So as a big data analytics practitioner, you know, we've heard a lot in the last couple years about the complexity of, of Hadoop and the challenges of Hadoop and how hard it is to get up and running and how hard it is to get ROI out of it. You guys have kind of been solving that problem. You're yeah. obviously running your business on it. What do you want to see from the ecosystem, from the community? Do you agree, first of all, that it's still too complex? Um, does it have to be simplified, or is that a competitive advantage for you that it's complex? <laughs> you know, it may be. So I wonder if you could talk about that dynamic a little bit. Yeah, I mean, a good thing is we understand our space and our data and we're able to kind of curate things for our customers. So that, I mean, that does give us an advantage, but I do, you know, as someone that's in charge of user experience, want to see continually breaking down that wall of the difficulty it is to get at the data and do the visualizations. Ultimately, we do want to enable our customers to be able to not have to call us and say, how do I do this or how do I get to this data? We want to make it available for them so that they can get to the data as quickly as possible and find things that they didn't know before. They can find audiences that they didn't know existed that they're underutilizing and then monetize on those audiences. Understand what the user experience is of the ads that are going in. If I do this, you know, this many ads, 
do I get a better user experience? Am I getting more engagement from my customers? Or what type of customers am I getting certain audience segments that perform better for this, uh, this ad load than that ad load? So there's a lot of possibilities that we can delve into that data and help guide them to see things that help them monetize and uh, um, optimize their system. Either guided exploration or simplified exploration so right. they don't need the guiding. Right, and I, I think ultimately it's going to be a little bit of both. As, as I said, we're, we're experts in our space, so I want to present things that are, are, are guided dashboards that really allow them to go down in and not have to know that much, but then you're going to have more sophisticated users that are, need to come in and they want to be unguided so that they can get to other data that we may not have thought of. How did you guys launch this business? Was it a situation, Chris, where you said, okay, now the technology's available, we've got the skill sets, let's, you know, somebody wrote a business plan, got funded and said go, or was it a legacy business that you then sort of supercharged with big um, data analytics? We, we've, we've always been in, uh, focused on dynamic ad insertion, depending on the platform, uh, early on, the company saw an opportunity within video on demand as an underutilized or underrepresented uh, area. So we kind of focused there and that's what we're, we're known for and now that we've established that we're moving far beyond that. I mean, uh, different platforms and different use cases um, being able again to provide audience data and decorate that and really allow them to explore their, their audience data as well. And your primary focus is enabling the efficacy of inserting ads, making it easier for your customers to do that. Um, well, I guess I should say the ease with which they can insert ads. What about the efficacy of the ad itself? I mean, that's not your role, but... So, th because we're the ad router and everything comes through us, through us, ultimately we're getting all that return path data and that is part of, so after we've enabled this ad insertion, we've decided who gets what ad and what ad should be served. It's not, the work's not done there. That's where the reporting really comes into play where now we can look at what happened as a result of that and then allow them to try different things, A-B test what they want to do with ad loads, as I said, or um, be able to tell agencies how well this ad did versus that ad. So that's all part of the solution that we, we provide. And the time in which you could actually provision an ad has obviously been dramatically compressed. Mm -hmm. How has that affected you know, hit rates and conversions? Well, so, it, it, again, it, it depends on the platform, and so we, we get a lot of information about the ads, but ultimately the, the, the operator's still in charge of working with those agencies to get the ad onto the platform that they need, so whether it's a CDN or on-site, a, a pump for video on demand, for example. Well, so the reason I'm asking is, is as a consumer, you, know, it's, you can tell it's getting better, yeah. but it's still not great, right? So, and there's a lot of upside. Would you agree with that? As an industry, do you feel like there's a ton of upside in terms of the efficacy of the ad placement. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that a, as they're exploring into these different s screens, um, they really have to see how they can monetize, and that's something that we're helping so that they can get different ads on as opposed to, you know, maybe you, you're used to seeing the same ad repeated during every single break, and you kind of, that doesn't end up making a good user experience. So all the work that we do to better enable them to do different campaigns, be able to track that kind of thing, or even prevent that kind of action, which our platform allows for, allows them to increase your user experience and ultimately makes you want to come back and actually watch that platform. So I, I'm like the ad serving industry's <laughs> like best customer, potentially, because yeah. I'm a sucker for an offer. Yeah. You know, and I buy a ton of stuff online. If I see something that appeals to me, I'm like, oh, I'll stop what I'm doing and, and grab it. So I, I just feel like the industry has a huge upside. Um, yeah and it should be good news for you guys. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, I think the upside for consumers as well is what we enable, again, their monetization of this allows them to offer more content. So, what I like to say is don't think of it as I'm making you, I'm forcing you to watch ads, I'm actually getting more content on demand for you. Right. Yeah. So, I want to go back to sort of a meta question, which is, sure. you know, Pentaho has this sort of end-to-end -end approach to tools that were very different from the data warehouse world, where you have kind of the, visualization, you know, kind of exploration, and then the kind of ETL over here. Mm -hmm. um, what is the value add of having it all integrated together in one big uh, single vendor tool chain on, in the, you know, big data world? So, I think there's a lot of things that, if, if it's a single chain that they can do, and that one piece can pick up immediately from the other. So, you know, a lot of the things that they kind of talked on the roadmap of being able to dynamically get 
do a data extract and then automatically have PDI build that model for you and that then gets published and then the user is able to go into Analyzer and seamlessly use that. Them understanding that entire workflow and being able to provide that gives us a huge advantage because it allows us to automate more easily. So that's something that we're definitely looking forward to using in the future. All right, Chris, we have to leave it there. All Congratulations right. on the Excellence Award. Thank you much. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest. This is theCUBE. We're live from Pentaho World in Orlando. We'll be right back. Live from Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's theCUBE.